What is up guys, I'm Rick Kakis, and today, the season of the Splicer has gone live for Destiny 2. There's only one problem, you can't play it. If you're in the game, you get constant honeydew errors every time you try to load somewhere, and if you restart, your game crashes before you even get to the character selection screen. So if I can't play the game, I might as well bring you guys some awesome new content looking at all of the new Vault of Glass raid weapons coming later this season on May 22nd when this new raid goes live because all the information about these weapons, their stats, their perk rolls were added to the database so we can get a preview of this new loot. And so, let's get started here. Now, first things first, let's start with the big boy in the room and that is the exotic Vex Mythoclast. It is an exotic energy fusion rifle, however it's not going to behave like a normal fusion rifle. It's going to shoot one bolt at a time, kind of like a rapid fire frame scout rifle. And let's take a look at those perks on light.gg. It's got a lot of unique ones. Firstly, the basic intrinsic is Timeless Mythoclast. This weapon fires a single bolt with each trigger pull, as I said. Then we've got Arrowhead Break, followed up by Volatile Battery. This battery simultaneously exists in multiple timelines, causing the weapon to overcharge and it greatly increases the magazine size. After that, we've got Temporal Unlimiter, Temporal Unlimiter, defeating targets build stacks of overcharge. And then the alternate weapon action is swap firing modes when fully overcharged. In an alternate firing mode, you can hold the trigger to charge up and fire a more powerful linear fusion shot. So wow, the Vex Mythoclast is now half, you know, what it was in Destiny 1 and half a linear fusion rifle, I guess. And after that, we have hand laid stock and there is a catalyst for this weapon as well. Wow, crazy. Moving on from there, let's go over the Fatebringer Legendary Kinetic hand cannon. So this is going to be an adaptive frame weapon, 140 rounds per minute. Overall looks like pretty good stats, maybe not the best range, but certainly fantastic stability and handling and a great recoil direction and good aim assist. A lot of good things going for it. Now when we look at the perks, firstly in the barrels, it's got the normal assortment of things going on here. Uh, full bore, you know, hammer forge, these are great ones to have. Small bore, then we've got, you know, accurized rounds to extend the range. Steady rounds if you want more stability actually and a few extended mag perks, that's usual. Now let's get into the perks. We've got a brand new one here, Rewind Round. So when this weapon's magazine is empty, it refills from reserves based on the number of hits. And it sounds like that's all a process with that weapon. So if you're scoring a bunch of precision hits and then the magazine empties, it just instantly refills to whatever, maybe half the magazine, maybe a full magazine, if you landed every shot, that could be extremely powerful. Then we've got Killing Wind, great in PvP. We've also got a new one, Tunnel Vision. Reloading after defeating a target greatly increases target acquisition and aim down sight speed for a short duration. That might be somewhat akin to Killing Wind, a decent choice in PvP. We've then got Osmosis, which remember now works with a Stasis subclasses after an update this season. We've got Thresh, great for PvE. And then we've got Explosive Payload. Of course, you gotta have that on the Fatebringer. Then we've got in the second category, Eye of the Storm. We've got Kill Club, a classic. Frenzy, really good new perk. We do have Opening Shot. Then we have a new one, Adrenaline Junkie. Grenade final blows grant bonus damage and handling for a moderate duration. Wow. Then we've got Firefly. Of course, this is finally coming here. Uh, basically, it's on the Ace of Spades only. Now, the Fatebringer and some other weapons we're going to look at can get it. And it provides that solar damage explosion in the kinetic slot. So that's very valuable. Your kinetic weapon can now deal solar damage, which definitely matters. And I'm going to say, I think the PvE god roll is going to be, you know, maybe an extended mag perk combined with probably explosive payload, but maybe thresh or the new rewind rounds, depending on how that perk works, combined with probably Firefly. That just sounds incredible, but honestly, Adrenaline Junkie sounds not bad either. For PvP, you're probably going for, you know, explosive rounds or maybe killing wind, and then you're combining that with, you know, kill clip could be good, but opening shot is likely going to be what a lot of people choose 
you know, shout out to Eye of the Storm, especially on console, could be good too. However, it's time to move on from there to the Praetith's Revenge Legendary Kinetic Sniper Rifle. So, taking a look at this weapon's stats, it is actually a rapid fire frame, so 140 rounds per minute. And we can see here fantastic handling, good reload speed, and great aim assistance. As we go down to the perks, let's take a look here. We've got the normal assortment of barrels. After that, we do actually have tactical mag and extended mag. Obviously, extended mag providing the biggest bonus is going to be what you want in PvE. Probably accurate rounds is what you want for PvP. Then in the first perk slot, we do have quick draw, PvP all-star, osmosis. We have rewind rounds again, and it, depending on how that works, if you can just get a bunch of precision hits on a boss and it instantly refills the magazine, this could be one of the best PvE snipe rifles of all time. It, like literally number one S++ tier if this perk works like that because that's going to be unbelievable basically doubling your magazine size if you can land those shots. We also have no distractions good for PvP just got a buff. Moving target good for PvP. Feeding frenzy is okay. Then we've got adrenaline junkie again. We've got opening shot which you may want in PvP. Then frenzy then high impact reserves. So rounds at the end of the magazine deal more damage. This is a very good PVE perk, gonna increase your damage output against stuff like bosses. And normally you're combining this with stuff like triple tap or fourth times a charm to re-get that damage bonus back at the end of the magazine. But if you can like, you know, get the damage bonus as you empty the magazine and then refill your magazine with rewind rounds, rewind rounds, and then get that high impact reserve uh, damage bonus again, that could really go into making this an unbelievable PVE sniper. And then we end off with Kill Clip and Firefly. Honestly, for PVP, something like Quick Draw plus Firefly could be the ticket. And then for PVE, obviously, rewind rounds and then high impact reserves are what you're going for. Moving on from there, however, we have the Vision of Confluence Legendary Energy Scout Rifle. Now, taking a look at the stats here, this is a 180 rounds per minute scout. These are not great right now in the meta, so we'll have to see how this shakes out. Taking a look at the perks, however, we have the normal assortment of barrels. Then we have, you know, some extended mags and stuff like that. Ricochet rounds are probably going to be what you're looking for in PvP, providing a range and stability benefit. Then we've got uh, the first perk slot here with tunnel vision reloading after defeating a target increases that target acquisition that could be decent in pvp we have wellspring as well as surplus actually in the same category here surplus providing a big stability bonus that could be pretty decent in pvp we have those rewind rounds back i think rewind re oh my goodness this perk is basically uh to the vog weapons what reconstruction was to the Deepstone Crypt weapons. You're going to see this uh, perk all the time. Then we've got Killing Wind, decent in PvP, and Zen Moment, not bad in PvP. In that second category, we do have Firefly. This is very exciting, uh, especially for PvE. Uh, getting a roll with Firefly could be very, very good. We've got Kill Clip, Classic, Disruption Break. We've got Frenzy, we've got Thresh, and we do have Full Auto Trigger System. So... In PvP, getting something like, you know, ricochet rounds plus killing wind or perhaps tunnel vision combined with a full auto trigger system or maybe even surplus plus full auto trigger system. This is just going to be an incredibly stable weapon that is just going to let you engage enemies full auto from distances they aren't expecting. But for PvE, I think you're going for something like those rewind, rewind rounds, holy crap, and then you're combining that with Firefly for just spreading around your damage, or maybe even Thresh, honestly, and that would be a pretty darn good roll. But we've got to move on from there to the Found Verdict Legendary Energy Shotgun. So taking a look at the stats here, this does belong to the aggressive frame, so the highest damaging, you know, slowest firing archetype, and that's always, you know, a pretty interesting one. These are the absolute meta for PvP. 
taking a look at the perks here. We do have, uh, you know, some great barrels. Rifled barrel is present as well as full choke. That's what you definitely want for PvP. Then we do have assault mag as well as accurized rounds and a few extended mag perks. Then in that first perk slot, again, rewind rounds could be good depending on how this perk functions. Surplus is back. Unrelenting is back. Remember, it did get a big buff and it's in the first perk slot unusually. It's usually in the second perk slot. Slide shot is here. Auto loading holster is here and full auto trigger system is here. In that second perk slot, we've got demolitionist. We've got one, two punch, and then we have opening shot. So opening shot is an absolute PVP all-star and that combined with slide shot, which is going to increase your range and stability after sliding. That could be the absolute wombo combo opening shot plus slide shot plus accurize rounds and then rifled barrel or full choke, that is going to be a really good PvP roll. But we also do have Frenzy, Killing Wind, and Vorpal Weapon. So as for the PvE roll, you're probably going for either Assault Meg to increase that rate of fire, or perhaps an extended mag perk, and then you're combining that with likely going to be those rewind rounds, and then you're ending it off for with Vorpal Weapon to get that damage bonus against bosses, that could be pretty interesting, right? Like, again, it depends on how good that Rewind Rounds perk is, but if it's really good and you get that full magazine back, even though aggressives are usually meant for PvP, you know, that plus Vorpal could really make a statement in PvE. Moving on from there, however, we do have the Corrective Measure. This is the Legendary Power Machine Gun. Taking a look at the stats, this is an adaptive frame 450 rounds per minute weapon. Honestly, pretty good stats overall. As we go down to the perks, we got the normal assortment of barrels. We do have some extended mag perks here present, which you're going to want for PvE likely. And then in that first perk slot, we've got Surplus. We've got Feeding Frenzy, great perk for PvE. We do have Rewind Rounds, and this on a machine gun could be very potent. We have Subsistence. This is actually big, big news. Subsistence is almost always only present on primary weapons. And remember, it just got buffed, so now it doesn't take away your reserve ammo. Subsistence with a 59 round in the magazine machine gun that is, that is pog, right? That's amazing. Then we've got Demolitionist, and we ended off with Dynamic Sway Reduction. Now, in the second perk slot, really interesting, we have Adrenaline Junkie. So, this is a huge wombo combo with Demolitionist. Demolitionist, where kills is going to uh, get you more grenade energy, and when you throw a grenade, it instantly refills the magazine. And then Adrenaline Junkie, where if you get a grenade final blow, you get increased damage and handling. So that means you're getting kills, regening your grenades faster, and then when you throw those grenades, you get a damage boost. That is a fantastic roll. Then we do have Thresh. We have One for All, great new PvE perk. We have Tap the Trigger, great PvP perk. And then really interestingly, we have High Impact Reserves. We really, I think this is the first time we're seeing this on a machine gun. And then we end things off actually with Firefly. So when we're looking at good rolls here for PVE, you're probably going for an extended mag perk and then subsistence or rewind rounds combined with, you know, Thresh, one for all, or maybe even Firefly would be fantastic. Or you could go for that Demolitionist Adrenaline Junkie Wombo combo. That could be fantastic as well. And then for PvP, you're going for, you know, a good barrel with some a good increase to stats. You're going for Accurized Rounds or Steady Rounds. And then you're combining that with probably going to be Dynamic Sway Reduction or potentially a Surplus for that stat increase. And then you're going for maybe Thresh or Tab the Trigger. But honestly, you could go for High Impact Reserves. It's not going to provide a massive benefit, but because in PvP you only get a few, you know, rounds to, to use, high impact reserves could actually matter there. In any event, it's time to move on to the last weapon on our list, and that is the Hezen Vengeance Legendary Power Rocket Launcher. 
So this is an aggressive frame archetype. And interestingly, according to the database, this has a rounds per minute of 25. Now that is actually faster than most other rockets. Most other rockets like the Royal Entry, you know, pretty much everything in the game have a rate of fire of 15. So keep that in mind because that is gonna actually matter here. Let's go over the perks. So we do have your normal assortment of launches. We do have uh, impact casing present for more direct impact damage, black powder for a bigger blast radius is also here, alloy casing for better reload speed, that all matters. But then in the first perk slot, things get really interesting. Tracking is here, quick dry is here, auto loading holster is here and that's always good with rockets. Impulse amplifier and surplus both increase the reload speed. But then we have overflow for the first time literally ever, we have overflow on a rocket launcher. So run over some ammo, some special or heavy ammo and then your magazine will likely go from one to two, maybe three, but likely two. And then that increase uh, rate of fire of 25 is actually gonna matter if you get the overflow round, uh, rounds. Then you've got in the second slot, Vorpal Weapon. This is a fantastic perk. This is only the second ever time it's been available on a rocket launcher. We do also have Lasting Impression for just the absolute max damage output. We've got Demolitionist, which is not bad as well. Wellspring, Thresh, and ending it off with the classic Cluster Bomb. So in terms of absolute max damage output, probably Impact Casing uh, or maybe even Black Powder combined with Overflow and then honestly, Vorpal Weapon, because that lets you use this like a normal rocket launcher. Impact, sorry, Lasting Impression is good. It gives you the most damage, but not by much. Like it's barely, we're talking, you know, 4% better than Vorpal Weapon in terms of damage output. So Vorpal is gonna let you just use this like a normal rocket launcher. You won't have to worry about enemies running away after you shot the weapon. You won't have to worry about champions putting up their shield before your rocket can explode, all of that stuff. I think Vorpal is overall a better general perk, but you can still get the like impact casing, auto loading holster, lasting impression roll for that. That is kind of like your max DPS roll because you can shoot it, deal a ton of damage, switch to another weapon, you know, and keep going. So that is going to be what a lot of people are going to be going for. For. Even Demolitionist though, that is a fantastic perk. There's a really a lot of good options here. This is a fantastic weapon overall. And guys, like I said, that is it for all of the new Vault of Glass weapons. You may be wondering, hey, there's a few missing, such as the Prettiest Timepiece, such as the um, Atheon's Epilogue. Those are not in the game. It seems like Bungie is bringing back most, but not all of the Vault of Glass raid weapons. And so guys, that is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys wanna see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you wanna get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That is linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.